Once upon a time, there was a topologist who lived with her daughter in a tiny office in the math building at the University of Chicago. <laughs> One day, the chairman of the department happened to be walking by, and the topologist gathered up the courage to speak to him. Pardon me, sir, but how does hiring look this year? Well, actually, Lauren, Lucy, whatever your name is, is looking tough. I hope we can find someone extraordinary, though. I know of an extraordinary mathematician. She can turn coffee into theorems. Really? And who is that? It's my daughter. Well, then send her to my office this afternoon. That afternoon, the topologist's daughter was ushered into the chair's office. She was quite apprehensive, as she had no idea how to turn coffee into theorems. Come with me to the math lounge. Here, you see a coffee maker and three cups of coffee. I want you to turn the three cups of coffee into theorems by morning. If you do not, then I'll see to it that the only job you ever get is at a regional university with high research expectations and a teaching load of four courses per semester. <laughs> with that, he left the lounge, locking the door behind him. The poor girl was distraught. She fell sobbing on the couch. Oh no, what will I do? My career is over before it has even begun. Suddenly, as if by magic, the door to the lounge swung open, <laughs> and in walked a squat, disheveled creature with long, matted beard and hair. He was dressed in a dirty shirt and torn jeans and even dirtier clothing. He seemed surprised to see her. What are you doing here? The chair has said that I must turn this coffee into theorems, or else he's going to destroy my career. And you don't know how to turn coffee into theorems? Oh no, I have no idea how. My father just said that to impress the chair. And what will you give me if I can turn coffee into theorems? Um, hmm. How about this copy of explicit constructions of RIP matrices and related problems? Ooh, let's see, that looks very good. I could get 50 bucks for that. <laughs> <laughs> you got a deal. And with that, the strange man gulped down all three cups of coffee. His bloodshot eyes began to glow. His eyebrows started to twitch. Then he sat down before a pad of paper and wrote furiously for three hours. <laughs> when he was done, the pages of three pads were covered with the most beautiful theorems the girl had ever seen. <sighs> that ought to do the trick. And with that, he scooped up the paper and was gone. The next morning, the chair unlocked the door, expecting to find the girl crying or sleeping with nothing to show for her night. But his jaw dropped open when he saw the scribblings on the pad. This is some of the most original work I've ever seen. It's really quite good. Thanks. Um, can I go now? What? Are you kidding? This is the beginning of some really good mathematics. But you need to fill in the details, flesh out the theory, come back this evening. When the girl arrived that night, the chair pointed to six cups of coffee sitting on the table. If you don't turn this coffee into theorems, I'll make sure the only work you get is as a recitation instructor, teaching 15 problem sessions a week for large calculus lectures. The girl fell sobbing on the couch. But she said to herself, if the little man can do it, why can't I? With that, she went over and took a sip. Oh, oh, this tastes like it's been sitting in the pot for 12 hours. Which, in fact, it had. <laughs> but then the door swung open again, and in walked the little man. His pants were torn at the knee, and his teeth appeared never to have experienced the friction of a toothbrush. Back again, are we? Yes, the chair said that I must turn these six cups of coffee into theorems by morning, or else he's going to turn me into a recitation instructor. And what, pray tell, will you give me if I do it for you this time? Um, how about my laptop? Oh. Well, that looks like a Mac Titanium Power PCG4 800 megahertz with one megabyte L3 and 256K L2 cache. You've got a deal. <laughs> So again, he gulped down the coffee and set to work. Six hours later, 
he had filled. <laughs> He had filled six pads of paper with theorems and proofs. This should do it. When the chair arrived the next morning, he was flabbergasted by the beauty of the mathematics on the pads. This is really good stuff. These are the germs for a whole new theory. I'm really impressed. Uh, good. Can I go now? Yes, but you must come back tonight. You have more work to do. That evening, the chair sat her down before 12 cups of coffee. <laughs> if you don't turn this coffee into theorems, I'll make you into a permanent grader for our remedial algebra course. <laughs> But if you do succeed, I will give you a tenure track position on the faculty here at Chicago. <laughs> the girl fell on the couch sobbing. It was too much to hope that the smelly man would be back to help her once more. And besides, she had nothing left to give him. Suddenly, the doorknob turned and in he walked. Still trying to turn coffee into theorems, are we? Haven't you learned how to do it yet? Oh no, I can't do it. And the chair is going to make me a permanent grader. Oh, woe is me. And what will you give me if I do it for you? I don't know, I, I have nothing left to give. Oh, I think you do. I want you to give me your firstborn theorem. What do you, what do you mean? The first theorem that you prove for yourself. I want you to give it to me to claim as my own. Now, the topologist's daughter knew that if she said no, she wouldn't ever have the opportunity to create her own theorem anyway. So there wouldn't be anything to lose. On the other hand, if she did survive all this nonsense and had a career as a mathematician, what was one theorem more or less? So she agreed. OK. <laughs> oh, yes, we have a bargain. And then he down. proceeded to gulp down all 12 <laughs> cups of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and then he worked through the entire night, finishing just before daybreak. Remember our deal. And he slipped out the door, leaving 12 pads of paper filled with wondrous mathematics on the table. When the chair arrived, he was stunned by the level of work that he saw. You have a job, a tenure track job. So the young woman began her career at Chicago. She was an able teacher and enjoyed that aspect of her job. But at first, she found it difficult to work on her research as other duties were so numerous. But one day, she attended a number theory seminar. The speaker presented a discussion of Catalan's conjecture, which says that the only two consecutive powers of whole numbers are the integers 8 and 9. She found the, she found the question quite fascinating. Soon, she was spending all of her time working on the problem. She would have worked even more, but sometimes exhaustion overcame her. Finally, one evening, Wanting to continue her work, but unable to keep her eyes open any longer, she stumbled into the department lounge and quickly swallowed a cup of coffee before she had a chance to gag. <laughs> Suddenly, she felt awake. Within minutes, the caffeine was coursing through her system and her neurons seemed to be firing every which way. She worked all that night and by morning, she had proved Catalan's conjecture. Although tired and in great need of sleep, she decided to wait until the chair arrived at 8 a.m. to tell him the good news. But at 7.30, just as her eyes were closing with exhaustion, the door to her office swung open and the little man, whom she had not seen for the last two years, bounded in. I am here to collect my debt. Oh no, it's too good. You can have my next one. I don't want your next one. I want this one. Please, please, don't take it. Um, I'll give you... Uh, it has taken me all this time to learn how to turn coffee into theorems. I can't give it up. I'll tell you what. If you can guess my name, I will not take your theorem. And I'll give you three days to guess it. <laughs> <laughs> the young 
young woman thought to herself that this couldn't be so hard. After all, he had made no rules about the guessing. She could guess as many names as she wanted. Eventually, she'd get it right. The next morning, the door to her office opened, and in popped the minor mutant. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you guess is my name? Is it Pythagoras? Is it Zeno? Is it Euclid? No, no, and no! Um, Nicomachus, Diophantus, is it Pappus? Be serious. Uh, Fibonacci, Newton, Leibniz. Ha! <laughs> You'll have to do better than that. And with that, he was gone. All that day, the woman searched in her books for every name she could find. She asked others around the department for any other names they might know. When the little man arrived the next morning, she was ready. Is it Bernoulli? Is it Euler? Is it Lagrange? No, no, and no again. Is it Gauss? Is it Cauchy? Cauchy? Is it Mobius? No, no, no. Lobachevsky, Dirac Clay, Louis, 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 oh, I can never <laughs> can say this one. Louisville, there we go. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> um, maybe Zermelo, Dickinson, LeBeg? No, no, and no. Tomorrow is your last chance. And with that, he disappeared out the door. The young professor was crushed. She didn't know what to do. Oh, woe is me. All that day, she wrung her hands, completely distraught. That evening, as she went to get a tissue from the bathroom to dab her tears, she heard a voice singing from within the men's room. I am so happy I could sing as I shower in the sink. For she doesn't realize who I am and how with this department I link. She doesn't know that I live in the lounge. She doesn't know my game. And she doesn't know the most important part. Rumpled Stillskin is my name. She immediately went to her mother's office. Ma, have you ever heard of someone named Rumpled Stiltskin? Oh, sure. Everybody knows about Rumpled Stiltskin, one of the most brilliant minds to ever grace this campus. Who, who is he? Who was he is the more appropriate question. Bob Stiltskin was a graduate student here 30 years ago, a real star. But he got hooked on Catalan's conjecture, spent all his time trying to prove it, couldn't bring himself to solve an easier problem and get a PhD. So what happened? After eight years, they cut his support and threw him out of the program. But he still hung around, used to sleep in the math lounge. Somehow, he'd gotten hold of a key. About 10 years ago, he disappeared entirely. Nobody knows where he went, but there are rumors of a sighting every now and then. And why is he called Rumpled Stiltskin? Well, he always wore the same rumpled clothes, and calling it rumpled is generous. <laughs> The next morning, the pungent person sprang into her office. <laughs> <laughs> Last chance, what's my name? Is it Beblin, Nother, Ser Serpinski? No, no, and no again! Burkhoff, Lefchetz, Littlewood, Polya? No, no, nope, and no. Sigmund or Hoff? No, and again, a big no. Looks like you're plumb out of luck. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Unless, of course, perhaps it's Rumbled Stiltskin. <gasps> How can you? How do you know? <laughs> I have to keep my proof. <laughs> His face had turned as red as his jacket. He had stomped his feet and gnashed his teeth and pulled forcefully on his matted hair. His eyes had rolled up in the sockets and then he had stormed out of the office never to be seen at the University of Chicago again. Since then, every once in a while, reports filtered down from the University of Illinois at Chicago of coffee pots found empty just minutes after they had been full. And at Northwestern University, departmental copies of random papers disappear at an alarming rate. The young professor went on to a successful career at Chicago. She and her mother wrote some joint papers and on the basis of which her mother was promoted to an office of reasonable size. <laughs> and although she did drink coffee for the next four years, she switched to herbal tea after receiving tenure. And even then, the theorems kept coming. The end. <laughs> Here's your laptop. Oh, yeah, thanks.